Okay, good evening and welcome to Borough President Adams Uniform Land Use Review Procedure uh, public hearing being conducted via the WebEx video conferencing platform. There is one item on the agenda this evening. Please note that this virtual hearing is being recorded to comply with the public law for transparency. It will be available for viewing on Borough President Adams' One Brooklyn channel on YouTube. Viewers may join the hearing via the link and password on the following slide and request to testify via the WebEx chat function. Please note that speakers will be limited to three minutes. Viewers may also submit comments to askeric at brooklynbp.nyc.gov for Borough President Adams' consideration. Please call the item and let's begin. Calendar item number one. <clears throat> 210425 MMK 220061 MLK 220062 ZMK 220063 ZRK 220064 ZSK and 220070 ZSK. Thank you. These applications submitted by River Street Partners LLC pursuant to sections 197-C and 199 and 201 of the New York City Charter and section 5-430 at, at SEC of the New York City Administrative Code for the following. An amendment to the city map involving the elimination, discontinuance, and closing of Metropolitan Avenue between River Street and the U US Pier headline, the elimination, discontinuance, and closing of a portion of the North First Street from a point 200 feet west of River Street to the US Pier headline. The adjustment of grades and block dimensions necessitated thereby, including authorization for an acquisition or disposition of real property in accordance with map number Y-2760, dated August, August 16th, 2021, and signed by the borough president. To facilitate a landfill of approximately 6,230 square feet located in in the East River in connection with proposed mixed use development within a large scale general development, LSGD, on property generally bounded by North Third Street, River Street, North First Street, a line 200 feet northwesternly of River Street, Grand Ferry Park, and the US Pier headline in a proposed C6 2 district. A zoning map amendment changing the aforementioned project area from an M3 1 to a C6 2 district and a zoning text amendment to designate an MIH area coterminous with the rezoning area. An application in connection with the proposed mixed use development for the grant of special permits pursuant to the following zoning resolutions sections. 74-743 subsection A2 to modify the height and setback floor area distribution, maximum residential tower size and maximum width of building walls facing a shoreline per section 62-341 requirements. 74-743 subsection A13 to allow replacement or reconstruction of existing land projecting seaward of the bulkhead line with new platforms that would be included as part of the upland lot to allow such new piers and platforms to considered lot area for determining allowable floor area dwelling units and other section 62-31B and C bulk computations on waterfront zoning lots. To waive the requirements of ZR section 62-242, 62-54, and 62-63. An application for the grant of a special permit pursuant to zoning resolution section 74-533 to reduce the number of required accessory off-street parking spaces from 40 to 20% of all dwelling units as income restricted housing units in connection with the proposed mixed use development. Such actions would facilitate two mixed use towers, one with 49 stories and one with 64 stories. In all, the proposed development would contain 1.6 million square feet with approximately 1,050 units, a 30,000 square foot community center, 79,000 square feet of commercial space, including office and retail, 250 attended parking spaces, 538 bicycle parking spaces, and approximately 2.9 acres of public open space, along with 2.32 acres of accessible in-river space, and 0.86 acres of intertidal area. Approximately 263 units, representing 25% of the residential floor area, 
would be affordable to households earning an average of 60% AMI. Community Board 1 approved this application with conditions on September 14th, 2021. Would David Lombino, the representative for this application, please state your name for the record and present the application. Hey, it's Dave Lombino. Uh, I'm going to cede the floor to Bonnie Campbell, my colleague, who's, uh, who's, on, who's on as well. Great. Thanks, Dave. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Let me know if we can't. Um, so I, I think what we're going to do, and, and thank you uh, to the borough president's office for their IT support on this. We have, a, I know most of the people here have probably seen some version of this presentation multiple times by now, but we're going to go ahead and play a very short uh, four minute video uh, that gives a bit of an overview of the project. And then I will quickly th take everyone through um, a set of slides. So if, uh, if we could. folks it seems like we're having some uh technical difficulties we're working on just bear with us for a minute
from my understanding, this has been fenced off for maybe about a hundred years or so. So this is the first time that I have the opportunity to even have this access. I remember growing up, I used to like look over the gates to this side and it was just deserted, all like messed up. We swam in that one. So, you know, at the young age, by 11 years old, we would sneak out and we had ways of overcoming fences. Hurricane Sandy puts a huge storm surge up into the low lying areas of the entire city, in fact, the entire region. Sandy came in with a punch and it sort of exposed vulnerability. Now, all the planning in the future has to be with that understanding that if a storm hits, it's going to impact everything in its path. What I like about River Rain is it's thinking more intentionally about the coastline. And that's why this development is going to be good for the resiliency of the community, not just of the two towers that the developer is building. Flood towers impacting our communities along our coast and river. We will prevent flooding impacts. We build dams, walls, levees, and volcanoes. That type of hard infrastructure doesn't create added value for society and the environment. The three principles rivering is based upon is one, stepping into that water with the development, with living breakwaters, but also building resiliency in the context of large waves that come in on the East River. Second is about the soft space, making sure there is the capacity to actually deal with too much water, but also create an environment where there's habitat restoration. And third is taking a step back with the buildings and the development, making sure that the park is created, has the capacity for the city and citizens to enjoy that river. So the question is, how do we build and what is the plan for the building? Will it be sustainable? Development started here and total buildings started to happen. Were people upset? Yes. But in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, there are already tall towers. A lot of these towers are bulky. They take up all of the space. What would be one of the advantages to getting a tower? There's more space for the community to play. At the same time that you're having public access to the waterfront, you also need to have a combination of market rent, but also low and moderate income apartments for working class people. I've been living in Williamsburg all my life. I was applying for low income housing for years. People were moving out because of the rent skyrocketing. So having 263 affordable apartments, that's amazing. When I see the vision of the River Ring project, it excites me. I could experience something that can almost feel like I'm not in an urban environment. It's one of the reasons people enjoy Domino Park because there's meaning, because it just feels like you're in a different place. Wouldn't it be amazing to have one continuous walkway? It's like when you have a big jigsaw puzzle and you lost that one piece and you can't find it, it's incomplete. Let's put this piece in. If around the world we see projects like Rivering that embrace water as an opportunity, there is a future for our children and grandchildren that is more resilient, more sustainable, and more equitable for all. That was the end of the video. Is anyone continuing the presentation?
Yeah, Bonnie Campbell's going to continue the presentation. David, does Bonnie need to be added back as a host? I think we might have lost her for a bit. Yes, please. There was a chat that came in that said Bonnie is muted. She cannot unmute. Aha, got it. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, now, if you could uh, pull up the slideshow as a screen share. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. So thank you, everybody. My name is Bonnie Campbell. I'm a principal at Two Trees. I'm super excited to be here presenting this project. Uh, I'm sure most of you have have seen it before, but I'm just going to kind of run through uh, the project again, and and then we can make ourselves available to answer any questions that you have um, on behalf of the borough president. Next slide, please. So here's the project location. Um, as you can see, the 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 site is really positioned between a tremendous network of waterfront open space um, and, and clearly it's, it's a missing piece there and we're excited to finally bring a vision together that would really reconnect this waterfront. Next slide, please. So I think here, you know, this is just another um, image of the, the project area. I think it's worth saying that we really had two main goals that underpin our entire proposal as we approached a, a, a plan for the site. The first is resiliency. We think that there's a real opportunity here to pilot a new approach for shoreline infrastructure. Um, that New York City can finally take cues from some of its European counterparts and other cities that are dealing with the realities of climate change, um, sea level rise, and the health of the waterways proactively. And we want this to be kind of a demonstration case. The second main goal is, is equity, and by equity, we mean in the form of environmental equity, getting people who live in this community board in this neighborhood, but don't have the opportunity to really engage in New York's ecosystem to actively engage in this open space. And then the second is, is social equity that comes with having uh, low income housing in a high opportunity neighborhood like North Williamsburg. Um, the integration and diversity we've seen emerge from the beginning of Domino has really been encouraging from our standpoint. And we think that this approach of, of uh, social equity and, and, and social diversification is fundamental to curbing gentrification in this neighborhood. Next slide, please. So after over the past two plus years, we've been hard at work um, engaging multiple agencies and stakeholders and and getting their input and the project has frankly evolved uh, quite a bit over the past two years um, due to this feedback both from agencies and stakeholders and community members um, and we hope that you'll find that the project is significantly improved we've expanded the quantity and quality of the open space we've compressed the building pr prints um, kind of to a bare minimum they're slender they're taller they take up less of the open space at the footprint we really dug into the engineering and, and the wave break infrastructure so we can think about this project in terms of the next 100 years, not just the next 10. Um, and then we spent a, a lot of time uh, thinking about the public realm and the ground floor of the buildings and the park and how they engage with each other so that this is a contextual um, building next to the park and it feels very public. And then we've expanded and enhanced some of the active uses in the in the park, including playgrounds, nature trails. And then finally, we over the course of the two years, we added additional units of affordable housing. Next slide, please. OK, first, I'll touch briefly on the, the open space and resiliency components. Next slide, please. And in terms of kind of the master plan for this park, you know, we, as I mentioned, this is a missing piece of a continuous public waterfront. So we really wanted to make sure that this is in integrated with the existing um, public shoreline. 
And then, you know, really paying proper tribute to Metropolitan Avenue as a, as a real gateway that Metropolitan is a wide thoroughfare it goes all the way to Jamaica, Queens, um, really kind of. Paying proper honor to this, this public gateway. 3rd would be a, a softened shoreline again, taking a new approach to a shoreline, renaturalizing it rather than the hardened bulkhead edge. Coming up with a, a different, um, actually more historic uh, way of of dealing with uh, with the, the the bank of the river, and then third is creating a, a spectacular waterfront park, which hopefully you'll share um, our our view that it is. Next slide, please. And here's kind of the the overview. I think here you you can see the existing shoreline and the white line um, as compared to what we're proposing and. It's really reimagining the whole shoreline, and it, it you know it's a bold proposal from an engineering standpoint. But we think today, like big action is required to really address the issues that that we're facing in New York. Next slide, please. One of the main benefits of this approach, of course, is is you know we're able to create rather than a linear shoreline that would give you 900 feet or so of. Uh, of walking pathways, we're really able to create this network of nearly a mile and a half of different types of pedestrian experiences and walkways and paths. There's passive paths and active path paths. If you're trying to get from point A to point B, there's a wide efficient sidewalk. If you want to meander, um, you can. It's kind of really designed to accommodate growth in this neighborhood and, and give pedestrians the experience of um, being able to walk without kind of the, the crowded sensation of a linear walkway. Next slide, please. And in, in doing these, uh, this kind of marine infrastructure out in the water, we're taking advantage of these historic caissons that, that were there when this was uh, back when it was a power plant um, and using them to hang these breakwaters off the edge um, that will actually, they'll sit in the water and they'll actually slow down the wave action by nearly uh, 80% which both has the benefit of both creating kind of a calm environment where you can have recreational water usage, but also has major impacts um, in terms of easing the damage caused by storm surges, not just of this property, but properties all around the site. Next slide, please. So this is kind of a cross section when you pull all of this together, you can see those breakwaters out there on the caissons um, that are able to reduce that storm energy. And then this whole mosaic of habitat that you can actually support in a calm river environment. Um, so not only does this have kind of the public benefit for the people above, but this is a, a real ecosystem that has longevity um, in the East River. Next slide, please. So now I'm just going to kind of run through um, a deeper dive into some of the park programming and features. Um, next slide, please. I think sometimes the bird's eye view it being you know so high up doesn't really do justice um, to the the myriad experiences that this park provides. It's actually a, a pretty large three acre park that can accommodate all kinds of activities. Next slide, please. Um, at the entry, you know, as I mentioned, this, you have this eighty foot wide Metropolitan Avenue entrance with an expansive river lawn, um, very inviting. You can see to the river and, and vistas to Manhattan. Next slide, please. Here is a rendering of that. Um, and as you, I'll mention some of this later, but you can see well in this rendering how the buildings are trying to engage with the public realm by being very porous with these open arcades so that there's a blending of the public and kind of neighborhood retail realm. Next slide, please. Some of the other programming I'll take you through right now, just so you can get a sense. Next slide, please. Here we have the actual trail, the, the, the ring walkway. It's a very wide, generous kind of expansive walkway um, that can you know, accommodate all kinds of uh, activities, meandering and, and views. Next slide. And then there's the beach, which is a, a very wide, um, expansive, open space for, for congregating or for, you know, just enjoying some peace and quiet. Next slide. And then the, really the soft edge is going to be quite, quite unique for an, an East River shoreline. Um, there's an opportunity because of the calmer water with the wave breaks to have functional salt marshes with tidal trails where 
um, people can really begin to see and engage with the, the ecosystem that's in the East River. Next slide. And then out in the water, um, there's some very unique opportunities for programming that, that don't typically exist in Waterfront Park. Next slide. Um, first, we can have a, a quite expansive nature play area, um, which will be in kind of sharp contrast maybe to other playgrounds that are around the neighborhood. This will be some place where kids can really explore and get into the natural environment in a unique way. Next slide. So this is another rendering of that play area. Next slide. And then these walks that go all the way out into the river to these outposts, you really feel when you're out there um, that you're away from the whole urban fabric. It's a very unique perspective. Um, and we're going to, we, you know, are excited to be able to capitalize on that to give people a, a unique experience. Next slide. And on the old caissons themselves, there's an opportunity to do uh, educational programming. We've been partnering with Billion Oyster and with Brooklyn Boatworks, and we intend to create kind of an outdoor classroom that can really, again, allow kids and, and New Yorkers of all ages to engage with their ecosystem and the ecology of the East River in a way that, that does not exist now. Next slide. This is another rendering of, of one of those outposts. Next slide. And that's kind of, again, bringing it all together concludes the, uh, the open space portion of the presentation. And now I'll talk very briefly about some of the architectural and urban design considerations that drove the massing of the buildings. Next slide. Perfect. So here, this is kind of what you see as a typical R8 massing. So R8 is the zoning designation that's to the north of us from the 2004 Williamsburg rezoning and then to the south of us of Domino. And this is how you would normally take the floor area associated with an R8 density and mass it on a waterfront site with a short public walkway and these typical kind of 45 story buildings that are um, similar to what you have north and south of the site. Next slide. What we've done here is taken the building footprints and really kind of squished them into the back two corners of the site, which has allowed us to create a much more generous upland park and really kind of prioritize the public realm. It does lead to taller buildings, as you can see here, but a much narrower, skinnier footprint. Next slide. Here you can kind of see that footprint on the ground floor level and how much of the space then is opened up to the public realm for the park and all the programming in the park. Next slide. And here's a cross section. Um, the, the project includes a 50,000 square foot YMCA that will include a kind of a world-class swimming pool on the second floor. And what's interesting to point out here again is what is being referred to as a waterfront arcade. So where the building hits the, the park, really pulling back the massing of the building in a way that allows um, park goers, park users to engage with the building, whether it's, you know, food and beverage, whether it's billion oyster project or Brooklyn boat works to really kind of have a seamless blending of the building and the public space. Next slide. And here you see, this is down, uh, North 3rd street you can see the YMCA. And in terms of kind of like the architecture, the facade, the topology, you know, we're working with our architects to really kind of um, take cues from the industrial uh, history of this neighborhood and the Austin Nichols building across the street, pulling it back from that and also kind of picking up on some of the fenestration style and, and materiality of, of the neighborhood. Next slide. And these slides I included, you can kind of, there's two of them, I believe, to show that arcade. Yeah, here you go. You can really see, um, you know, where the building and the park kind of come together in a, in a more public manner. Next slide. Um, and thank you, Jeff Lowell, for going through all of these actions, but this is the proposed actions that would make this project a reality um, through this application. Next slide. I won't go through them again. Um, and then just to kind of summarize some of the project benefits, you know, 263 units of, of low income housing, three acre park, um, the in water recreation area, which we don't count in the official park size, but it's a huge opportunity for fishing and kayaking and that sort of thing in a neighborhood that doesn't have that um, in a meaningful way. Now, um, the YMCA intends to bring their second grade swim program, which is 
free for second graders and, and gets them water safe uh, to the neighborhood kids. Um, and you know, I'll speak in a second a bit about kind of we're really trying to build these buildings without depending on city infrastructure for sewer, for stormwater, for electricity. We want to push the envelope here in a way that um, we haven't before and, and really push our peers to do the same. The partnerships I mentioned with Brooklyn Boat Works, Billy and Oyster, um, you know, we want it's going to be community neighborhood oriented retail on the ground floor. Um, and then. And then the, the, you know, the, the jobs that are created from this, both on a permanent basis and then construction jobs, we've have a history now with St. Nick's Alliance and very successfully um, engaging this community board and job training and job placement. And we're going to continue that here. Next slide, the subsequent three slides. I just want to conclude by clarifying some things because I know this public process has been ongoing and and we don't always get the chance to. Um, to respond to public comment, and so I, I would love to be able to do that um, just to kind of make sure everything's out there. Um, in terms of River Ring and, and the 263 units, we just want to point out that this is what we're opting into is, is a mandatory um, inclusionary housing requirement. So it's not dependent upon the developer's word or the whim of you know the future or the, even the existence of 421A. This is going to codify the requirement. Uh, into the, you know, into the zoning, it, it's in the zoning resolution. So it's not a future option. It's, it's, we will, there is a mandatory requirement for these units. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about one South first and wanting to get those units, um, the affordable units there uh, filled and we couldn't agree more. And I'm really pleased to announce tonight that um, after extensive meetings last week with HPD, we are planning the lottery uh, for one South first, it'll commence in six to eight weeks. We're going to, in addition to providing increased number of affordable units, we're privately subsidizing um, some low income units that were not required by the affordable New York program. Um, and as always, there'll be affordable uh, priority given to CB1 residents. I threw the website on here because it's time to start uh, monitoring that as the marketing uh, program comes together. It's housingconnect.nyc.com. And then finally, just there's there were a bunch of comments about um, some uh, historic lawsuits at 125 Court Street, which is another 8020 building that we own and operate. Um, and I just want to clarify for the record that the case that was brought was dismissed by the courts. There was no fraud found by the courts, but what it did do, the allegation did enable us to discover a rent registration error in the legal rents that we had filed with HPD. And and the legal rents that were filed with the rent stabilization under the rent stabilization law, this was absolutely an error. There was no fraud. We weren't trying to make more money here. Um, it, as soon as it was discovered, we refunded anyone that had been overcharged. Just to give you a sense of the magnitude, on average, it was about twelve dollars a month in the low income apartments, which is not insignificant. I know that, um, but we did repay that. $12 per month with 9% interest to the handful of low income tenants that were um, that were impacted, but we we're certainly not trying to uh, gouge people or this was a simply a clerical error that we resolved. Next slide, please. Um, and then on the open space again, I just think the bird's eye view doesn't necessarily do it justice. Um, we're providing 300% more park area than would ordinarily be required under the waterfront zoning regulations. Um, by comparison, Domino Park's four acres for um, many more units. In fact, River Ring is a pretty expansive um, park given the limited footprint of the site. And just to be clear that we will privately fund, construct, maintain this public park um, under a maintenance and operations agreement with the New York City Parks Department, which will mean we'll, it'll be the same standard as we have a Domino. Uh, you know, we think this will improve just kind of the overall condition of sanitation and trash and beautification in this neighborhood, um, not just at the site, but around the site. Next slide. And then my final slide, I know there's a lot of concern in this community about infrastructure and impacts of new development in the pipeline on infrastructure. You know, we're your partner in this. Um, we wanna push the envelope here. We intend to have uh, both a waste on-site wastewater treatment plant and a microgrid here, we're also intending to reconstruct the existing outfall, which will mean it's upgraded. 
Um, you know, in terms of pedestrians and crowding, you know, I think the 1.3 miles of, of new pedestrian walkways will go a long way. The sidewalks are going to be much wider than what they are today. Um, and then I've already spoken about the resiliency aspects, but we think that's super important, not just to this site, but to the wider neighborhood. And then I know there was some concern um, articulated about potential for school overcrowding. I just wanted to remind um, the borough president's office that as part of the domino project, there'll be a 90,000 square foot new public school um, that we will build in partnership with the SCA and that will be online and open before uh, River Ring ever breaks ground. Um, and then obviously we've spoken about the YMCA and then a little bit about L train overcrowding. I, first and foremost, we're stakeholders also in the health and functionality of the L train like this. This is where our assets are. These are where the apartments that we rent are. So we are stakeholders and we, we share your concern. It's, it's, you know, in doing kind of our homework and research and even, you know, outreach to our own tenants. Ridership on the L has even before the pandemic leveled off. Um, I know there was an extreme kind of overcrowding when the uh, 2004 uh, redevelopments kind of came online in 2011, 2012, that sort of thing. Um, luckily, I know it was a little late, but the MTA completed the capital projects that they had promised um, as part of that rezoning in 2020 and 21, uh, which has overall made the, line, the L line have 10% more capacity, which is hugely significant. And then the station improvements um, at the Bedford L have increased capacity at that station by 100%. So, you know, again, we, we share your interest in making sure the L is healthy and functional and efficient. Um, we will continue to be advocates for that. Um, we think that right now it's in, it's in pretty good shape um, and certainly can handle the few passengers um, on each car that this project will will bring. And with that, I will open it up to questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bonnie. Um, I have a handful of questions. Um, you may have addressed some of them, but let me read them in for the record anyway. Um, uh, first off, as Community Board 1's recommendation came with a comprehensive list of conditions, please acknowledge which conditions the applicants intend to meet and elaborate to what extent the other conditions would be partially considered. Great. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned, we've been doing outreach in this community board for over two years. We presented the project as it's evolved uh, to the community board about four, four or five times. We are very encouraged to receive the positive resolution, as you mentioned, um, and we take the commit conditions and recommendations very seriously. Uh, there are 13 conditions articulated, and I'm confident that we're going to make headway on the majority of them. First, um, the first condition, in fact, was regarding the affordable units at 1 South 1st. I spoke to that earlier, but th those are coming to market immediately um, with HPD. Second, regarding the request to increase the number of affordable units at River Ring, this is something we're definitely open to discussing. Um, while we can't likely get to 50% affordable, we heard loud and clear that the community wants more than the 263 units that we are proposing. I also just want to note that I think we're one of the few, if not the only developers that are opting into the option one under the mandatory inclusionary, which is 25% at the lowest AMIs that are available in the mandatory inclusionary program. So 60 and 40. Um, and then we, we definitely are open to discussing the inclusion of more family size units. Um, and we can absolutely commit to the minimum bedroom size uh, requested by the community board. Um, in terms of Bushwick and Inlet Park, we, as community stakeholders, will seek to be advocates and partners for pushing uh, for the completion of Bush, Bush, Bushwick Inlet Park. Um, regarding the New York Climate Protection Act and climate change goals, we absolutely share the community board's goals, um, and we're committed to making this project a, mo a model for climate change, uh, including striving for carbon ne neutrality. Addressing sea level rise, as I mentioned, and reducing any reliance on non renewable sources. Um, we commit to thoroughly vetting the feasible the feasibility of all green building technologies, including geothermal, which they've mentioned um, as we advance the design of the project. Uh, we're also committing committed to doing ongoing work with city planning to ensure that the facade and street level experience is both contextual for the neighborhood and appealing for pedestrians and park users. We're in discussions with the Carpenter, Carpenters Union, and we're optimistic that this project, like our past developments, will adhere to the safest and best construction work practices. 
Um, regarding the enforcement of rental fees and increases, this was something they requested. Uh, I just want to note that this development will be subject to the rent stabilization laws. And as such, all fees and increases will be tightly regulated and disclosed publicly to uh, through overseeing government agencies. In this case, it would be DHCR. Um, two trees will absolutely work with the department sanitation and neighborhood stakeholders to minimize the impacts of trash pickup. Um, and I think it's also worth mentioning that we we take great great pride in managing the upkeep upkeep of our open space around our buildings, as is evident in Domino Park, and we're partners here in that initiative as well. Um, finally, we'll definitely share plans for the YMCA as they evolve to demonstrate that this world class 50,000 square feet facility meets the proposed promise. The purpose and promise of serving the Greenpoint and Williamsburg communities. Um, we can't commit to tying the spaces build out and operation to occupying the residential units as the uh, community board had requested, simply because the, there's distinct DOB and DOH approval processes, and that the YMCA itself will have great autonomy in opening and operating their facility um, that we don't have control over. The only condition that we can't partially meet is the request to reduce the overall size of the project by 33%. Unfortunately, this magnitude of reduction would render the project not financially feasible and it would impede our ability to, to deliver on some of the conditions I described above. Thank you. Uh, returning to the intended affordable housing units, what is the qualifying income range? For prospective households based on household size, and what are the anticipated rents based on the number of bedrooms, and what is the distribution of units by bedroom size? Sure, the distribution we will determine as we get closer to um, building the project, depending on like kind of what market demand is, both on the affordable side and the market side. Um, in terms of incomes, it'll be a combination of uh, sixty percent of AMI and forty percent of AMI. Um, by way of comparison. So for a 40% of ANI, an eligible family of four makes $45,000 a year, would be eligible for a two bedroom apartment that's about $854 a month. Um, a 60% of AMI income is about 68,000 for a family of four, and the rent for that one two bedroom would be about uh, 1366 per month. Okay, thank you. Um, please identify- Jeff, I just wanna jump in quickly. Yep. So, we mentioned 40% and 60% classes, but the 60% in the zoning resolution is actually an average rent collection. So you're looking to forego units in excess of 60%. Is that what I am taking by your response? Not necessarily. I mean, you know, in, in reality, and I don't have a crystal ball to, to um, foresee what the requirements of whatever financing we pursue at the time, clearly, you know, 421A will no longer be in existence, but. Um, whether there's a different program that has AMI requirements or maybe potentially a financing program, whether it's taxes and bonds or whatever it is, um, we'll adhere to those. So, you know, we'll, we'll want flexibility to make sure, um, but we anticipate, you know, taking advantage of those types of programs will probably push us to the lower end of the AMIs. Because I recall hearing at the community board uh, public hearing, the idea was 15% of the overall units, which is 60% of the affordable, were stated as intended for 40% AMI and the balance of the affordable, 10% of the overall units, 40% of the affordable, were talked about at 60. That's what I thought I heard at the community board hearing. That's what I'm asking for the clarity. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think, um, you know, we would, we're committing to adhere to option one as it's written in the zoning resolution. All right, so that guarantees 40% of the affordable housing at 40% AMI, and then the remaining 60% of the units could be at varying incomes well in excess of 60% AMI with none exceeding 130% of AMI. Right, so long as the overall average is 60. But again, I mean, the, this is something that we are definitely open to um, a continued discussion if, to ensure that, you know, we're, we're meeting the, the demand of this specific community board. All right, so just then what I heard at the community board, which would have been a lot 
less than 60% AMI is not actually what you're talking about. You are talking about preserving your right to have a 60% AMI average rent collection. Yes. All set, Richard? Okay, great. Um, please identify what marketing strategies, uh, such as designating one of this community's affordable housing nonprofits as the affordable housing administrating agent, uh, would be used in the tenant selection process in order to ensure the highest level of participation from community district one, especially those that are rent burdened or at risk of displacement. Yes, uh, in, um, in, sorry, just would such a marketing strategy start off with a financial literacy campaign to assist area residents in becoming lottery eligible. Absolutely, uh, similar to what we did at Domino and 300 Ashland, we will kick off the marketing uh, campaign with a financial literacy uh, workshops um, and we'll continue kind of to build on our success and aggressively market marketing the affordable units, multiple languages in person workshops. Um, through all kinds of media outlets. Historically, we've partnered with local nonprofits to ensure uh, that the affordable opportunities are, are kind of thoroughly advertised and made available um, aggressively to CB1 uh, residents. We'll do the same here and we'll take direction from local electives to determine, uh, you know, which local agencies are, are uh, most beneficial to partner with in terms of casting the widest net and ensuring um, expeditious uh, filling of those units. Okay, thank you. Um, and it's for President Adams' policy to promote the use of renewable energy resources focused on advancing a sustainable future in Brooklyn. It's also his policy to promote stormwater retention practices. What consideration has been given, possibly in cooperation with the DEP, the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, NYSERDA or NYPA, to the incorporation of passive house design, blue, green, or white roof coverings, solar roof and or facade panels, Geothermal, I think you mentioned earlier, DEP curbside rain gardens and or wind turbines. Yeah, I mean, so nothing is really off the table with us. We're excited to explore all of those technologies and see to what extent um, we can actually integrate them into the design. Um, I think someone had mentioned the uh, facade solar. It's something that it's a new technology for high rises and it's something we're definitely interested in learning more about. In terms of the stormwater retention, the site is exciting and unique because um, it actually isn't does not put any stormwater into the CSO, the city CSO system. Um, all of the stormwater here gets diverted, treated, and um, and directed through two private outfalls into the East River that get permitted by the DEC. So um, that's uh, and that's actually the case at Domino as well. So that's a, a quite a benefit in terms of stormwater. Thank you. Um, my final question is Borough President Adams' policy to maximize quality jobs for Brooklynites. Uh, please outline what steps will be taken to ensure the inclusion and participation of minority and women-owned business enterprises and or local business enterprises in the construction process, as well as prevailing wage jobs with benefits for building service workers. Great. Um, you know, first and foremost, we have an agreement with 32BJ to ensure that all building service workers at River Ring will be union jobs. Um, and then, you know, in terms of MWB participation in construction, we've, uh, you know, we're proud to say we've met and exceeded um, both the expectation stated requirements, but also the expectations for MWP uh, BE and we'll, we'll do the same at uh, River Ring. Our approach with local hiring and partnership with St. Nick's uh, has really been effective in training local residents in both construction and greenscaping. Uh, we've been working with our subcontractors to keep them committed to aggressive local hiring goals at Domino, and we're going to expand on that. We have an opportunity to expand on it at River Ring. Great, thank you. So um, that's my last question. We'll open it up to questions now. We remind viewers who wish to testify that you must enter your name in the WebEx chat uh, and state intent to speak on the application. After the presentation and question and answer portion, we'll call speakers in order of chat requests. Uh, speakers will be limited to three minutes. So, Ina? And I'd also quickly remind that those who are using the phone that don't have the ability to chat, we will be reaching out to the phone lines that we have to see if there are speakers among those who have called in. Okay, uh, we have uh, quite a few speakers who have signed up. Our first speaker is Joseph Sitkoe. 
followed by Sinead Wadsworth and Joseph Kessler. And I apologize if I misspell anyone's names. Joseph, you're unmuted. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Joseph Sakawi. I'm the Waterfront Design Associate Director at the Waterfront Alliance, the leader in waterfront revitalization, climate resilience, and advocacy for the New York, New Jersey Harbor region. The Waterfront Alliance is committed to sustainability and to mitigating the effects of climate change across the region's hundreds of miles of waterfront. And to that end, we support the River Ring proposal. Two Trees project team is currently undergoing the Waterfront Edge Design Guidelines or WEDGE verification process overseen by the Waterfront Alliance. WEDGE was launched seven years ago and has evolved to become a premier climate resilience verification and transparency rating system for coastal developments and retrofits. Because he was like, we'll open it up to, but no, I think it's people just right. testify. Um, sorry about that. So percent average say, but I don't think we can commit to 60%. You're unmuted. Can you please mute yourself? You heard Richard's question. Yeah. That like he thought Bonnie, you're uh, unmuted. All right, I think it sounds like I can continue now. Um as I was saying, Wedge was launched seven years ago and has evolved to become a premier climate resilience verification and transparency rating system for coastal developments and retrofits. To obtain Wedge verification, much like a LEED certification, coastal developments must meet design standards for climate change resiliency, provide access and benefits to the public, and must be designed to maximize and protect ecological integrity. Domino Sugar is wedge verified as our eight other projects across New York City and several more are under review. While the final verification of rivering will only be complete upon reviewing construction documents, the concept plans have already gone through a preliminary review process overseen by the Waterfront Alliance with an outcome of strong initial scores. Based on the concept designs that our wedge reviewers have analyzed, Rivering will likely meet or exceed requirements on key aspects of climate resilience, public access, sustainability, community engagement, and innovation. Waterfront projects seeking wedge verification can earn points across six categories. There are 36 credits in the wedge rating system, which help guide project teams toward specific strategies for excellent waterfront design, including assessing current and future coastal risks to sea level rise, storm surge, and rain-based flooding, conducting an equitable public engagement process to maximize community outcomes, citing and design to reduce risks to coastal hazards through setbacks, nature-based and structural strategies, creating inspiring state-of-the-art shorelines that promote resilience, ecology, and direct access for recreation and programming, and reimagining urban habitats and green infrastructure through landscape design and stormwater management. The Brooklyn Borough Board agreed with these principles when in 2019 they adopted a resolution encouraging the use of wedge guidelines in all ULER projects. Waterfront Alliance believes this is the right project at the right time for the city's waterfront. We urge the borough president to support the land use actions necessary to make River Ring possible. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sinead Wadsworth, followed by Yosef Kessler and Shaurav Datta. Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Sinead Wadsworth, a council representative for the New York City District Council of Carpenters, speaking on behalf of 300 members and their families. We would like to express our full support for the Rivering Project today, as it is crucial for our community and economic recovery. Two Trees Management and the Carpenters Union have had and are poised to engage in meaningful and regular discussions about future community union career opportunities for this project as well as other upcoming projects. Two Trees has recognized the value proposition of utilizing union carpenters, including that we provide efficient, productive, safer, and extremely skilled workforce, which aids in the quality of construction as well as scheduling and speed to market. 
They also recognize that the wages and benefits earned by union members support a middle class lifestyle, in turn contributes to the overall economy and aids in reducing the need for affordable housing. As we move closer to reopening and a return to normal, construction will be a critical source of well-paying, stable careers. Time and time again, affordable housing has become the American dream and has been considered a priority to members of our, the, of our communities and our elected officials. I would like to take this opportunity to express my dissatisfaction with this mindset. Approving a project like this can and will aid in ending the cycle of poverty. Creation of affordable housing should be a stepping stone out of poverty, and it is not a cure. New Yorkers shouldn't be struggling to make ends meet, and when we have developers like Two Trees willing to invest in our communities, we shouldn't squander the opportunity to help the impoverished. The New York City District Council of Carpenters is proud to lend our support to this important project. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Yosef Kessler, followed by Shaurav Datta and Luke Grachowski. Hi, my name is Yosef Kessler. I'm the head of operations and partnerships at UNI. On behalf of UNI, I'm here to testify in support of the River Ring development. We are a black and brown led startup from Brooklyn committed to building a free, secure bike parking city uh, system in New York City and beyond. As a civic startup, we are dedicated to providing New Yorkers with equitable transportation infrastructure, which is sorely lacking in our city. As one in four New York households have experienced bike thefts and lack of secure bike parking is the second largest barrier to greater cycling adoption in our city. We believe that new developments like Two Trees plays a, t a crucial role in fulfilling this public infrastructure. We're, we're proud to be partners with Two Trees in bringing a public secure bike parking and service facility to the development, helping to bring 538 secure bicycle parking spaces to the area. Williamsburg is one of the city's busiest cycling areas. However, the neighborhood lacks any public secure bike parking and experiences high rates of bike theft. This development would provide an invaluable service to residents surrounding neighbors, visitors, and working cyclists and significantly helping to increase access to sustainable modes of transportation, as well as adding to the environmental and social resiliency of the neighborhood. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to voice our support for this application. Our next speaker is Shaurav Datta, followed by Luke Grachowski and Jose Leon. Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Borough President Adams and Borough Hall staff. My name is Sharath Datta, and I'm speaking in support as a constituent, a public servant, and also a first-generation immigrant who's benefited myself from living in dense, uh, mixed-income, rent-stabilized housing in Council District 33 for the last decade. I appreciate that Borough President Adams had the local roots and local knowledge to fully understand the affordability crisis facing Brooklyn. However, in many rezoning applications located in rich Brooklyn neighborhoods in particular, we've hindered our ability to take even small steps toward solving this affordability crisis in the way we choose to cut the scale of new uh, modern housing opportunity. We've admirably asked for more affordability, but often in exchange for lower density and at the cost of more units and thus also the ability to house more families. These cuts are consequential. They're cuts to the dream of housing stability for so many rent burdened New Yorkers living in substandard housing, poorly suited to survive climate change. We've all seen the impact of Hurricane Ida on some of our neighbors. I thank Community Board One for hosting a spirited discussion on River Ring. However, for them to ask to cut down the number of homes realized by this project based largely on subjective aesthetic and contextual concerns will be a lost opportunity toward bringing modern, energy efficient, climate resilient, mixed income affordable housing that will add housing choice and security in a Brooklyn that is already priced out of reach, priced out of reach for so many. 
Concerns about promised park spaces at Bushwick Inlet not having materialized do not seem like they're attribute, attributable to the housing developer. Let's support accountability, but also direct it appropriately. Domino Park has obviously been a run of a success and the benefits of a new fully connected public waterfront park space that River Ring will offer are obvious. I hear the community's concerns on neighborhood infrastructure, but the project does appear to consider these in good faith. And also let's push our electeds to uh, elected in officials to augment the infrastructure we need to welcome new New Yorkers in the six years it will take for this project to come to fruition, but not use that as an issue to potentially hold new homes hostage. I encourage Borough President Adams to support this application while maximizing the number of new homes it will create. Thank you for accepting my testimony. Okay, our next speaker is Luke Grachowski, followed by Jose Leon and Salvatore Francino. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you. Um, I was born and raised in Greenpoint. I've seen the area change a lot. And I wanted to say a few things about the river. If you could say your name uh, for the record, please. Uh, Luke Grachowski. Yeah, yeah, I've been following the story from the beginning. And, uh, you know, what can I say? I really like the park. I think the park is, like, I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, I've been hearing people complain that the city hasn't finished Bushwick Inlet Park. So this rezoning shouldn't happen. And to me, that makes no sense. You know, we need both parks to happen. You know, River Ring is literally the last piece of the waterfront. That the city doesn't have control over and here you got a public developer who's trying well a developer who's trying to make it public and uh you know i mean some people have always also said that it's only three acres i mean you know the the, the soccer field at bushwick inlet is three acres i mean how's that not insignificant you know so anybody who says that they're for bushwick inlet but they're for, against this i mean to me that makes no sense and uh, i just wanted to say a couple couple days ago i heard somebody bring up the tragedy that happened in domino park you know some guy drowned you know, if you're trying to use it for your own, you know, points, trying to like make sure that some building doesn't happen next to you. I mean, that doesn't make sense to me, you know, that, that's just not right. I mean, if you look at all the really cool parks that are opening up, they have access to the waterfront. You look at Long Island City, you look at, uh, you know, Brooklyn Bridge, you know, everything has access to the, to the shoreline that we have been cut off from for so long. So, um, you know, is it a big development? Yeah. You know, it's not the first you know, skyscraper to go up. So I think that it's worth it if we have such a cool park. So thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jose Leon. Um, I am with Saint Alliance and I wanna thank the uh, Brooklyn Borough President's Office for the opportunity to say a few words. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of St. X Alliance, Los Sudas, and El Puente, the coalition. Uh, all three are grassroots mission-driven organizations engaged in affordable housing, environmental justice, and creating access to low-income uh, people seeking a foothold in the economic growth in New York City. Um, the statement I'm about to read uh, updates our correspondence regarding River Ring, sent to the community board and shared with our elected officials, including the borough president. The recent community board recommendation to approve with conditions uh, warrants an update to our earlier communication. Collectively, uh, we engaged uh, two trees and other developers during the rezoning of industrial land to residential for community benefits. In the Domino uh, Park rezoning, that advocacy led uh, to environmental justice gains, as exemplified in the award winning Domino Park and over 85 construction jobs created and affordable housing set aside. Two trees has been a leader amongst. Uh, developers and proactive community engagement in these efforts with great success. However, one goal, and I'm excited to hear um, uh, Ms. Uh, Campbell uh, mentioned uh, earlier, uh, one, go one goal not fully realized are the 66 apartments at the 1 South 1st Street building. We have worked with two trees and elected officials to resolve and ask that this issue be considered as part of the uh, borough board re uh, review. While we understand concerns about height and density, uh, creating deep affordable housing and underwrite, uh, underwriting improvements to the environment and creating jobs is a greater, much greater priority concern for the community. We make the following recommendations regarding the proposed River Ring project. Community Board 1 has set a condition of 50% affordable uh, of the units to be developed. 
we demand that these units be available to residents with incomes of 40% AMI. Most of the current inclusionary units are at the 80 to 120% AMI, and too often are filled by rising young professionals who have far more housing options. And we have an opportunity now to address this critical flaw in the 421A incentive. We also ask that these affordable units be made affordable in perpetuity. Two Trees has been exemplary in working with community residents and have helped create a new point of access to construction jobs. They have exceeded commitments in the last rezoning goals. Uh, now there's a starting wage of $20 per hour, contribution to cost of local training, and commitment to wage and skill growth through career pathway and recently provided access to union building service worker positions. Two Trees has committed to providing local hiring for 100 construction jobs, 50 per building, underwriting the training costs, access to 10 union scale building services jobs, 100 to 250 permanent jobs at the site and the commitment to career path for those placed on wages and skill growth. And most importantly, they have committed to remain accountable to the community on these commitments on River Ring. We encourage you to support our recommendations and want to thank you so much. Our next speaker is Salvatore Francino, followed by Ankur Dalal and Ruben Colon. Hello, this is Sal. Thank you for your time. My notes and talking points are a little bit all over the place, so hopefully I sound coherent tonight. Um, I live in Community Board 1 off the Graham Avenue L train stop. I do spend a lot of time at the waterfront. And I know that our future mayor, Eric Adams, says he wants to upzone rich neighborhoods. And this is the perfect place to um, put that idea into practice, and we can do that with the River Ring project. Um, I just wanted to say that I support the River Ring project 100%, but I do disagree with the community board's um, suggestion that they cut the number of units by 30%, because reducing the number of units is going to mean reducing the number of affordable units. And even if you tinker with the percentages of, oh, we want this to be 50% affordable rather than 30%, you're still limiting the potential for how many affordable units we can get due to, you know, interrupting the economics of scale with this. So I definitely disagree. The original height, the original number of units, I'm on board with that. It makes sense to me. If there's one thing that should be cut, it is not the height, but it is the parking. I do know that um, future borough president Reynoso is also in agreement that this uh, proposal does have a little bit too much parking. And that maybe if you wanted to increase the number of affordable units, maybe we can get rid of some of that parking and make it even more sustainable because I do know we've talked a lot about climate change and reducing parking, whether it's on street or built in an apartment complex, uh, reducing parking will help us meet climate goals and lower emissions. So I do think that that is something that we should do. Let's cut the parking and let's not cut the height. And I also just wanted to say I disagreed with the, the community board suggestion that 60% of the affordable units should be two and three bedroom apartments so that families could live there. I do think that that is a very narrow minded view of what a family is. Um, I, I'm gay. I don't plan on having children. My husband and I, we are a family. We live in a one bedroom apartment for people to say that um, families only live in two and three bedroom apartments. It's, it's very narrow minded. Um, I do know young professionals who have roommates, they live in two and three bedroom apartments. So let's just keep an open mind and let's not be very, very, you know, constricted in, in what we see as a family unit. Um, other than that, um, oh yeah, as a right alternative, uh, I don't think anyone wants an Amazon distribution center there. I think we saw the, uh, the park renderings and it looks like a really nice park. So why don't we just uh, get this thing approved so we don't have an Amazon center there? That's all I got to say, and uh, thank you for your time. All right, our next three speakers are Ankur Dalal, Ruben Colon, and Julia Foster. Thank you. Um, this is Ankur Dalal. And I am here to testify in favor of the rigor, River Ring proposal and to urge the borough president to reject the suggestion of the community board to remove 300 homes and support this proposal as presented by the developer with the conditions that the developer believes they can reasonably meet. 
This is a proposal that will result in over a thousand new homes for individuals and families, including hundreds of permanently affordable rentals, a public park, a beach, and a YMCA. Our housing crisis is profound, and saying no to this rezoning means telling hundreds of families that Williamsburg is not willing to provide them affordable homes. At the community board hearing, there was a lot of discussion about how the community needs to get more public space and public facilities from spot rezonings. That's exactly what this rezoning does. It provides a beach, parkland, and a YMCA. I think as you heard tonight, almost everyone in the community that I've heard from is supportive of this proposal. While I'm glad that the community board approved the application, I urge the borough president to reject some of the conditions, specifically the elimination of nearly a third of the units and an increase to 50% affordable unit, units. While we want as many affordable homes as possible, I note here, as I did in my testimony to the community board, that people don't live in percentages, they live in homes. Losing one third of the units while demanding half of them be rented out at below market rates would only ensure the project not go forward at all. 50% of zero homes is zero homes. These conditions are not actually designed to maximize the number of housing units. One change that I would support, as has been previously testified, would be to remove any required parking if that could result in a greater number of affordable units. In his mayoral run, Borough President Adams has indicated that he believes wealthy neighborhoods should be upzoned from mixed income housing. The Williamsburg waterfront is exactly the kind of area that needs more mixed income housing. I urge the borough president to support the proposal with the additional commitments presented by the developer as reasonable this evening. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ruben Colon. Uh, I want to thank uh, the honorable Mr. Adams and his staff for their hard work in providing a venue uh, by which the public can express itself. Uh, I am a representative of the New York City District Council of Carpenters. I speak on behalf of over 300 members and their families living in the area of the proposed development and thousands more that live and work in Brooklyn. Thank you for the opportunity to submit my testimony in favor of the development. Previously, Brooklyn Community Board 1 approved the project with the conditions. Among those conditions was the following clause, quote, Two trees must negotiate in good faith with the New York City and vicinity District Council of Carpenters to ensure the project adheres to the safest and best construction work practices, unquote. Immediately thereafter, and sometime before, Two Trees Management took steps to meet this condition. The New York City District Council and Two Trees Management recognized that we have a mutual interest in aligning ourselves against emergent anti-development efforts in New York City. Acknowledging this, they have committed to meeting with the New York City District Council leadership in the coming month or so to further discuss labor at River Ring and other projects. It is important to note that the above cited condition was among the few that actually addresses the cause and not the symptoms of the various social ills that plague our communities and society at large. The need for affordable housing is a symptom of a larger looming issue for the working poor, poverty. The New York City District Council holds that a good union job goes a long way to tackling this issue, especially so in these troubling times we face as a nation. Hence, at this crucial juncture, we are in favor of approval. Thank you. Okay. Our next speaker is Julia Foster. And after Julia, we will give uh, attendees who are calling in by phone the opportunity to testify. Me? My, hello. My name is Julia Foster, longtime resident of Williamsburg. I've lived here predominantly all my life. And I just want to state that yesterday, not even yesterday, Saturday, I walked this community and I've seen the changes that have overtaken Williamsburg. And as I walked this community and looked at the changes, most of the changes were stores that were no longer there that I favored 
like John's Bargain Store, Triangles, the French Fry Store, and all those stores were mom and pop areas and they were homes. As I walked the block of Grand Street and Graham Avenue, all I saw were bars. Bars. So I said all that to say, I am in favor of two trees. We need homes. We're arguing at meetings and all these other meetings about homeless shelters that are coming in. Let's build homes so we don't have all this homelessness. And I'm going to look forward to and hoping and praying that two trees work with the homeless shelters to get some people that are working people to get an apartment, to live comfortably and in a nice place and not in a shelter. So I said this to say, let's cut down on the bars, stop giving permission to all these bars and rezoning for bars and no homes. Let's build homes. Let's make families stay here in Williamsburg and not commute somewhere else. So I just like to say, I am in favor of two trees building and let's give these people some homes to live in. Thank you and thank you Borough President for listening to us and everyone have a great and wonderful day. The phone lines have been opened. If you wish to testify, please state your name first. Hi, my name is Brian. I uh, just want to share my support for the River Ring project. Um, I grew up in Williamsburg. Uh, I spent a lot of time along the Domino Park waterfront, um, and it's a great space. I love that um, the River Ring project will bring more green space available to the public, uh, along with um, the affordable housing. Um, also, I want to say that I do support the additional parking just because in that neighborhood it is becoming very uh, hard to find parking. So we need as much parking as we can get, uh, not the other way around. Um, I'm also excited for the YMCA. Uh, I hope there's an indoor uh, basketball court in the community. That's something that's lacking. So it'll be nice to see an indoor basketball court in there. Um, and yeah, that's really it. Uh, I just, I'm excited for the project. I can't wait to spend time uh, in the, uh, by the water and, and, and see you know, how everything will look once the project is complete. Uh, you guys have a good night and thank you for letting me share my opinion. Good evening to all. My name is Esther Alvarez and I have resided in the Williamsburg community for over 25 years. Having been raised and seen the changes that have been made in my neighborhood, I highly support the River Ring project. This project will bring a positive and everlasting experience to families in many ways. First, it will give an opportunity for affordable apartments with equal access and finishes. This project will create more job opportunity for local individuals, especially after being impacted by the loss in workforce due to the pandemic of COVID-19. It will also create a more green environment where families can go and build memories in the park and have time to enjoy the East River waterfront view. Nevertheless, this project will provide access to the YMCA facility so that our children and families can benefit from the resources and services being offered, which can be very challenging, especially for low income families. I believe this project will change the lifestyle of many families that have not been able to get the opportunity they deserve. It will enhance the landscaping of the Williamsburg community and will keep many community members out of trouble by involving and keeping them busy and providing a positive experience. Thank you all for your time and have a great evening. River Ring Project is the way forward. 
Phone lines are still Hello. open. Can you hear me? Yes, Hello? I hear you. Okay. Hi, my name is Stephanie Rodriguez. I am a longtime resident of the South Side of Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I grew up there, um, and I am in full support of this project because um, I think it's amazing that we get to have access, uh, as I mentioned, to the beach, to, you know, our youth will have access to the YMCA, which is something that we didn't have, you know, I didn't have when I was growing up in the area, and um, it would have been great to have. Um, growing up in Williamsburg, when it wasn't the Williamsburg that it is today, it's nice that we're going to have the opportunity to have um, affordable housing and also be able to live there as, you know, other people from other areas are moving into Williamsburg. Um, it's an amazing project, and I'm in full support of this. I'm super excited um, to see, you know, how it's going to affect our community and, you know, the access that we will have to these projects. Hi, my name is Ivania Hernandez, and I am in full support of the River Ring project. It's important to have affordable housing in the neighborhood. The cost of living is going up, but wages are not. I grew up in Williamsburg, and we didn't have safe outlets available for lower income residents. The green spaces for physical activities, parks, and picnic areas has helped the community come together and feel safe. Like I said, I grew up in Williamsburg, and the scene now is breathtaking. It's beautiful. I, I was just there over the weekend and was able to enjoy my Sunday with my daughter at, at a safe environment where all walks of life came together. <clears throat> um, in true support of this project, thank you all for listening. Our phone lines are still open if you wish to testify. If we have no other requests by phone at this time, uh, we would like to resume uh, testimonies from those joining via WebEx. Our next three speakers uh, via WebEx are Millie Kamiri, Jomiri Ramirez, and Yaritza Ramirez. Hi, good evening. My name is Millie Kamiri, and as a longtime Williamsburg resident for the past 36 years, my family and I have seen a positive difference in the neighborhood thanks to two trees being a good neighbor. We are really hoping for more community benefits like housing, parks, the YMCA, and not a warehouse or a factory. It is really about completing the waterfront connectivity between Grand Street Ferry and River Rim Project, as uh, I believe Rosendo mentioned. Um, creating a place where New Yorkers of all ages can actually interact with the waterway, touch and feel the wetlands. Um, I truly enjoy Domino Park with my nieces. Um, it's a safe environment, as the previous uh, participant mentioned. And I also believe that having a YMCA that we didn't have is going to be um, important for children of all ages to benefit from um, a swimming pool um, and have access to you know, the little beach. I think uh, we are so excited, and we are all in support of River Rim Project. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Jomiri Ramirez, followed by Yaritza Ramirez and Elaine Brodsky. 
anyone who is unable to uh, unmute at this time, uh, we will circle back to you and give you another chance to testify. Uh, if Jamiri Ramirez cannot join us, our next three speakers are Yaritza Ramirez, Elaine Brodsky, and Tommy Torres. Hello, my name is Yaritza Ramirez. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Yes, we hear you. Hi, um, I've been living all my life in Williamsburg and seeing the difference is amazing i have two kids i'm currently looking for an apartment and there is it's been so hard you can't really find anything afford, affordable so i fully support this new project and um, my sister jamari ramirez always has also been looking for apartments we love going to domino park it's a it's a good little area for the kids and yeah we just fully support everything our next three speakers are elaine brodsky tommy torres and ray acosta via webex hi this is elaine brodsky chairperson of the north brooklyn chamber of commerce speaking in support of the river ring project there are many reasons that we at the North Brooklyn Chamber see this unique River Ring project as being a positive addition to our community. First of all, this construction project will create many, many new jobs for local workers. We need more green space with lots of natural attractions, use of the waterfront, walking, walking trails for families, couples, and school classes. There will be a brand new facility for the Greenpoint YMCA. Um, we hosted a virtual discussion with the MTA who assured us that this project would have no negative impact on the L train. We all know what Two Trees has done at Domino Park and how that park space has been embraced by a diverse section of our community and tourists. Jed Walentis will continue to work with this local community to make this project right. They have never let us down. They are highly professional. They will create a quality product and they will take care of what needs to be done as the years pass. For all those reasons and many more, as you've all heard tonight, we support and approve the River Ring project. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Next speaker. I apologize. Tommy, please go ahead. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Just just double checking, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, Tommy Torres, uh, community board, one member here in uh, Williamsburg and Greenpoint, lifelong resident, and I uh, grew up here in, uh, in Williamsburg. Um, currently, I'm an assistant principal, 25-year veteran of the uh, Department of Education. Uh, with our district 14 schools and um, I'm calling in today in, in full support of um, of this project. I'm so happy that our, our community board one was able to pass this project. It's such a beautiful uh, thing to see what uh, Domino has brought to our community and our kids. Um, you know, we're looking forward to to the strong collaboration uh, with district 14 students. Uh, I'm so happy to see our educational partners of St. Nick's of Puente has also joined us. In support of this project is going to do so many uh, so much for our kids and our and our community and in terms of uh, community engagement uh, since day one of dominoes uh, uh, Dave and being on his team uh, 
connected with our, our, our schools and uh, got several of our kids hired uh, throughout the years and, and given an opportunity. And of course, affordable housing. Uh, we can't wait, we can't wait. Our community continues to, to need affordable housing uh, to stay here in Williamsburg. So uh, I thank uh, Two Trees, I thank the borough president and, and his staff for putting this important meeting together. And I look forward to, to seeing this project uh, come to fruition in, in the next few years. And uh, I'm in full support, Tommy Torres, thank you. Our next three speakers are Ray Acosta, Michael Kawachka, and Cristiano Rossi. I'm not seeing Ray Acosta. Okay, hey, could we move on to Michael and then come back to Ray at some point? Hi, I'm Michael Kowachka. I'm a fourth generation Greenpointer. I volunteer on the board of the Greenpoint YMCA, P the PS1 uh, 110 PTA, and the Community Board 1 Land Use Committee that deliberated this project. Through various public hearings, it is increasingly clear that there's strong, diverse community support. The affordable housing included in this project, as well as the park, the new Y, and the subsequent job creation that will be generated. Project supporters outnumber opponents at each of our public hearings. I found that the vast majority of opposition to the river ring is coming from the immediate neighbors to the site, specifically condo buildings at Northside Piers, 184 Kent, 80 Metro, and 330 Y, where residents may experience negative impacts on their waterfront views. Currently, neighbors enjoy uninterrupted views over the site, which is vacant except for a few interim uses. The folks that insist that the site remains zoned for manufacturing are being disingenuous. They would really just prefer that nothing gets developed there. The truth is, this site on Williamsburg's Old Coast will never remain vacant. It is too valuable as a potential residential site that includes hundreds of affordable apartments, or even with, even with its existing zoning, which can be used for big box retail, distribution, and last mile delivery. We all know that the two trees proposal can be improved upon. That's what this process is for. So we can give our input and recommendations to maximize the community benefits from any development on this site. In my mind, the mix of affordable housing, park space, and community facilities like the Y in the two trees proposal does just that. I urge the borough president to approve the proposal with workable conditions that ensure that this site can actually be developed with the community benefits that are being proposed. Thank you very much. Our next three speakers are Cristiano Rossi, Charlie Samboy, and Renzo Ramirez. Hi, good evening. My name is uh, Cristiano Rossi. I'm on a um, hospitality group in New York, and um, one of my restaurants is uh, in Williamsburg. I come from Italy, and when um, and in Italy, we are we very have uh, we develop a lot of the waterfront. When I come in New York, I was very upset that uh, the waterfront is never uh, developed. And so when I see the projects of two three of two of that part of our, I was so happy. And I move in Willisburg, and I open my first restaurant in Willisburg. So probably because I see I can see how be. be can become that part of the city. Williamsburg is very, very nice, but I think it missed something. And the thing is missed is the continuity of the Domino Park and the development of that part of waterfront. I think by uh, owner of a restaurant, the owner of business in the area, that the that help us to develop the 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 develop the neighbor and to help us to bring more people to come to, park, to the park and to visit this new building. I totally support this project and uh, I really love and hope that they, be, they become true. They become more close 
to the European style and the European uh, waterfront. Thank you very much for hearing me. Bye. Our next three speakers are Charlie Samboy, Renzo Ramirez, and Rob Buchanan. Uh, good evening. Thank you. This is Charlie Samboy representing the New York Building Congress. Uh, to the borough president and staff, thank you for giving us the opportunity to testify today in support of this transformative vision for repurposing a formal industrial site and a mixed use waterfront asset for the community and its residents. We believe River Ring is the right type of investment for New York at this critical moment in time. Our road to recovery must follow a path based on public and private investments that will build New York back better and have an impact that can be felt across the five boroughs. As New York rebuilds following the COVID-19 pandemic, the building industry will provide an immediate and essential boost to the economies of our city and state while providing thousands of people with an opportunity to get back to work. We are proud to support River Ring as it will generate more than 2,000 construction jobs and over 500 permanent jobs. The project is anticipated to inject nearly $1 billion into the economy through its development. And this investment will translate into millions of dollars in earnings for workers during the construction phase alone and provide an annual impact to the city's economy after completion. Rural Road is a milestone in the continued evolution of one of New York City's most iconic waterfront neighborhoods, delivery, delivering on the promise of a new waterfront and responding to the threats of climate change through various infrastructure and resiliency measures. The project's microgrid will also help address peak energy demand response and act as a backup generator in the event of an outage. All these components working together demonstrate a greater commitment to sustainable practices and that resiliency planning is integral to its design. In closing, River Road will be a catalyst for waterfront developments that will integrate public open access, public open space access, and resiliency measures for the benefit of the entire community. Transforming a former industrial site into a state of the art development while providing affordable homes is a win for Williamsburg and all of Brooklyn. The, Brooklyn, the Building Congress proudly supports this project, and we urge you to approve it as well. Thank you. Our next three speakers via WebEx are Renzo Ramirez, Rob Buchanan, and Randy Pierce. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. Yes, we yeah. hear you. Good evening. My name is Renzo Ramirez, and I am a member of 32BJ. I work as a doorman. As you know, 32BJ is the largest property service union representing 85,000 property service workers across the city. We remain clean. We, well, I'm sorry. We maintain clean and provide security services in buildings like the one being discussed at River Rank. We estimate that this rezoning, which will allow the construction of two residential towers with nearly 300 affordable apartments, community, retail, and parking space. River Ring will provide 500 permanent jobs and more than 2,000 construction jobs on a site that currently supports zero employment. The permanent jobs include YMCA employees, building service workers, park maintenance, retail, and nonprofit employees. The commitment to good permanent jobs in this project is clear. The best way to make sure that developments like the one proposed have a positive impact on building service workers is for developers to make a formal commitment to pay the prevailing wage and create good jobs with families, sustaining wages and benefits. We are pleased to let you know that the developer affiliated with this project, River Street Partners LLC, has a track record of creating good jobs throughout their portfolio. River Street Partners LLC has made an early commitment to creating prevailing wage building service jobs at this site. We are in full support of this project. These jobs are typically filled by local members of the community, and because of this commitment, will pay family sustaining wages, which help bring working families into the middle class. The percentage of affordable apartments are needed for working people in Brooklyn. This affordable housing and commitment to good prevailing wage jobs will give opportunity for upward mobility, security, and dignity to working class families. 32BJ supports responsible developers who invest in the communities where they build. We know that this development will continue to uphold the industry standard and provide opportunities for working families to thrive. Thank you for your time.
Our next three speakers are Rob Buchanan, Randy Piers, and Mike Cherepko. Hi, good evening, and thanks for the opportunity to testify. My name is Rob Buchanan. I'm from the Billion Oyster Project. We're an environmental nonprofit working to restore oyster reefs to New York Harbor through public education initiatives. And we're here tonight to express support for the proposed River Ring project for two reasons, because of its ambitious goals for habitat restoration and for in-water recreation. For the past year and a half, we've been working at Domino Park and the River Ring site, so we know it well. And uh, along with neighborhood organizations and volunteers, with students at MS50 and other local schools and colleges, we've installed and are monitoring the growth right now of several hundred thousand juvenile oysters. We're gonna add more in the next year. Um, and eventually looking at two or three million oysters even before River Ring is, is built. Um, also in a storefront space on Kent Avenue, we are hosting a water quality testing program where community volunteers are monitoring sewage pollution at more than 60 sites up and down the East River and all over the harbor. And we think the data that we're collecting will be valuable in evaluating the success of the River Ring project. Okay, just to get to the main issue here, why do we support this project? Almost all, as I'm sure almost everybody knows, almost all the Upper Harbor and East River shoreline has been hardened or bulkheaded, and that creates obstacles to both ecological restoration and public access. River Rings Waterfront Park design is an attempt to break that mold. It includes two features that no private developer has attempted to build before. One is an extensive habitat restoration zone that will include tidal wetlands, shallows planted with subaquatic vegetation, and structures to support the restoration of our estuaries, keystone species, yes, the oyster, and other aquatic life. And the second feature is a, an edge design that includes a beach, a protective breakwater, and a rerouted CSO, a combined sewer outfall. And so taken together, these extraordinary innovations will allow for wading, for human power boating, and someday perhaps even swimming. What we have seen, the Billion Oyster Project has seen at Domino Park, is that the neighborhood and the city can greatly benefit from well-designed and well-run waterfront parks. And we think the River Ring Project will go Domino one better, creating a new kind of public space where residents and visitors of all ages can get right down to the edge of the harbor, see and touch what is living there, and get into, onto and into the water itself. And that's the kind of experience, probably more than anything else, that will help change public perceptions about the harbor and the estuary, a key step, we believe, toward building a more resilient and sustainable city. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Randy Pierce, Mike Cherepko, and Sasha Aiken. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Randy Pierce, President and CEO of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. Thank you to Borough President Adams uh, and to the team, uh, Jeff and Richard and everybody who does this work every day, and we appreciate your time. Uh, Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce is the largest business association in New York State. We are the voice of the small business community here in Brooklyn. Our economic development arm, the Brooklyn Alliance, uh, advocates for projects that create jobs and opportunity for Brooklynites. I'm going to add my uh, name to the chorus uh, in support of this project. Uh, from what I hear tonight, it seems unanimous, but there's a lot to like. Um, let me focus on some things that um, have flown under the radar a little bit. Uh, jobs and opportunity. One of the things we learned during this pandemic, if we're going to get out of this pandemic, uh, is that we have to advocate for jobs and opportunities for Brooklynites to get the economy rolling again, particularly in the small business economy. Uh, this project um, with 506 permanent jobs, 2,000 construction jobs does just that. Uh, but more importantly, the mixed use character of this project uh, is really the type of project that we saw make sense, uh, especially given a crisis like a pandemic. Brooklyn is leading the way out of the pandemic, mainly because uh, projects like this across the borough uh, create both live, work, and play environments and incorporate a multitude of uses. Uh, the second thing that's been on my mind more recently uh, is really the issue of resiliency. And I'm not an expert on resiliency, but I will tell you this. Uh, since Hurricane Ida, uh, my team's been working around the clock assessing business damage and residential damage uh, due to the uh, storms. 
uh, and it's pretty brutal. And, you know, this is the first project that I've seen that really does look at waterfront resiliency and incorporates it in a way that actually looks to solve the problem long term uh, versus just try and um, incorporate the waterfront as is. And that just doesn't work anymore. So there's a lot to like about this project. Uh, the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce fully supports this project. It makes a lot of sense from an economic development perspective. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, from an affordable housing perspective, and we enthusiastically uh, support this and ask the borough president to do so as well. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Mike Cherepko, Sasha Aiken, and Harrison Grinnan. Hi, I'm Mike Cherepko. I've lived in East Williamsburg since before the other towers were on the Williamsburg waterfront. So this is my neighborhood, but I don't live right next door, but I think it's still important. This is a project that would benefit people from all over Brooklyn. The land use chair of Brooklyn Community Board 1 brought up testimony several times that a man from Coney Island came to the meeting to speak in support of it because he thought that this is a great project and it would be something that he would want to travel all the way to Williamsburg for. And I agree with that. What there is of opposition to this project seems like it's a very aesthetic and it boils down to, I don't like tall buildings. Um, it's a very localized concern. And because of that, the community board asked that 30% of the units be removed from this project while asking um, this to go forward. The Williamsburg waterfront is already gentrified, so this is the perfect place for a project like this. The market rate units will keep rich people from trying to move into my neighborhood and live in my apartment, and the, they will also subsidize the affordable units. Um, if we removed 30% of the units from this, and then we also took off 15% of the units from the Atlantic Avenue McDonald's. That's why we have a housing shortage. These cuts add up. I hope that Borough President Adams, probably the future mayor, will take the bigger picture and, and approve the full proposal with all of the units because this is the perfect place to have a project like this. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Sasha Aiken, Harrison Grinnan, and Dan Miller. Hi, uh, my name is Sasha Aiken, uh, and I'm a homeowner in Williamsburg. I disagree with my community board, and I'm strongly in favor of this project with as many units as possible. Uh, I believe this because I lived in San Francisco for many years, uh, and I witnessed over the course of two decades the slow death of almost everything that made that city great. Uh, I saw what happens to neighborhoods when you say no to housing over and over and over again. And what happens is that rich people don't just disappear. They buy up the homes where low income folks are living. They kick those folks out of their homes and they renovate the homes to live in themselves. Neighborhoods can and do gentrify with no buildings whatsoever. I've seen it happen uh, and it's already happening here in parts of Williamsburg. Um, and, you know, like many economists have been studying this phenomenon for the last few years and they find over and over again. The new housing relieves gentrification and displacement pressures on the nearby neighborhoods. And it's really important to note that that, that benefit is present, present for both affordable housing and for market rate housing. Um, what's more, this particular project is such a unique opportunity. It's not going to displace people, uh, you know, because no one is living on this site right now. It's a disused industrial site in a prime spot on the water. Williamsburg is also, as many people have said today, a very high opportunity neighborhood, exactly where we should be advocating for more housing at all income levels. On top of that, the developers have partnered with community organizations. It provides much needed waterfront public space, and it includes a significant amount of affordable housing. The only thing I don't support in this project is the inclusion of a parking garage, to be honest. Uh, I don't think we can continue to build infrastructure for cars, especially in transit dense cities like New York, and expect to deal with climate change in any real way. The parking garage should be replaced with more housing for more neighbors with as much as it as affordable as possible. Uh, with that said, as a homeowner, as a community board, 1 resident, and as a neighbor, I'm very, very, very much in favor of welcoming more neighbors into Williamsburg and sharing this wonderful neighborhood. I look at this project and I think, yeah, that that's where I want us to go. Um, so please approve this project as proposed with as many units as possible. Thank you. 
Our next three speakers are Harrison Brennan, Dan Miller, and Sonny Eng. Hello, I'm Harrison Grinnan. I live in Greenpoint in Community Board 1 and Council District 33, as well as Emily Gallagher's district. I'm actually just a few doors down from her uh, office. I support this rezoning, and I have a couple of reasons why. I think the affordable housing is great. I think the market rate housing will reduce pressure on neighboring neighborhoods. I think that it'll be great for integrating an area that is increasingly white and wealthy, and I think that it will do a lot to alleviate displacement as well as displacing no one, which is, you know, difficult to do. We do need more housing, but it's it's tough to build new housing on lots that already have housing, even if we're adding new units, because those people do get displaced. This displaces no one. Right now there's putt-putt there. It's, it's a perfect project, and that's why we've heard so much for support for today. I'd like to go over the uh, testimony from the land use committee, though. Uh, so the recommendation of the community board was yes with uh, conditions, and there was a lot of discussion about whether yes with conditions or no with conditions. There was no discussion on any of the actual conditions. I don't know where they came from. It was not discussed in any publicly available meeting. So I'm just going to go through them really quick. Uh, two trees must rent all affordable units in their one South First Street development. Uh, that's been done. Reduce total number of units by the project by 33%. That's a horrific thing to do to this project. You know, you're depriving 300 families of homes. I have no idea why that would be necessary unless you had an apartment directly behind it that you wanted to maintain the views of. Uh, increase the total number of portable units to 50%. I think that'd be great if it was possible. It sounds like it might not be. It might be more of a poison pill. Uh, but I think that whatever the total number that's economically feasible, whatever the highest number at the lowest affordability is feasible, I think that should happen. But, I, I, you know, that's, that's number stuff. Um, 60% of affordable units must be two or three bedroom units. Uh, to me, I really would like more two or three bedroom units, but I think that what we're going to continue seeing in this neighborhood is that more they get rented by roommates. And that's because there's not enough studios on the market, unfortunately. Uh, I know many people who rent two, three, four, even a five bedroom unit with roommates. Uh, I don't know any families that are able to afford them because when you're bidding against, you know, even people who are, you know, first year analysts at, a, at an investment bank coming out of college, they're very willing to live in tight quarters and they have a lot of money and you need to make a ton of money to outbid those people. So it's, it's very difficult. And until we build enough studios that these people can live alone, like they actually want to, they're going to continue to displace families. Um, I bring that up because you actually would be required to have the same number of market rate, two or three bedrooms as you do uh, affordable because you need to have the same composition of units between the two uh, minimum bedroom size. That's fine. Uh, Bushwick Inlet Park, I really don't understand what that has to do with this project. It's a, it's the city's fault they haven't built that. Uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with Two Trees, who's done a great job with Domino Park, which they were supposed to use. Uh, fossil free energy source, I mean, yeah, if that's possible, that's great. To me, the most important climate goal here is maximizing the total number of units because every single person that lives here, uh, you know, will be using transit and won't be living in Tampa or Houston or Dallas or Phoenix, places where people move to when it's too expensive to live in New York and there's not enough housing here, um, places where it is much, much more difficult to live a climate-friendly lifestyle. That's a bigger priority for me than a uh, geothermal heat loop system, although that'd be cool if it works. Uh, redesign the towers so they are less obtrusive and oppressive in feel. That's when I really kind of started to lose it with these suggestions. I mean, the thing that's oppressive is the rent. It's, it's nothing about what a building looks like that makes me feel oppressed, especially these buildings, which are very nice. Maybe the Verizon building from Lower Manhattan, but that's a different story. Uh, what's oppressive is that people can't afford to live in this neighborhood. And the reason that, for that is that there's not enough housing for them. And that's not only this neighborhood's fault. We need more housing across the entire city and the entire region. There's been negative housing creation in Long Island this century. That's ridiculous. But, you know, it's nothing about the look of the building that people find oppressive. It's that they can't afford to live there. And the reason for that is that there's not enough housing. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff about unions, which it seems like Two Trees is doing. Um, and then some kind of odd stuff about like they need to uh, fill out an architectural design plan that gets signed off on before the rezoning even happens for the YMCA with like where the pool is going to be specifically in the building, which I, I don't really know that much about how the architecture of that all would work, but that doesn't seem like this step in the process to me. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think that overall, this is a, a great project. It's clearly got a lot of support and I strongly support it. And I, I would really like to see it go through 
with just as much density as, as his own for. The only recommendation I would make that was echoed by Reynosio and was recommended by a lot of people at the hearing, but not added to the list of recommendations that the community board made was that it include less parking. I think that if we could cut the parking, parking is very expensive to build. It goes underneath the ground in this case, and that's an extremely expensive thing to do. Maybe that would I'm make sorry, it economically sorry, feasible to have more units. I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you can sum it up. Yeah, that, that's it. That, that's that's my, last, my last point was that remove parking, add more affordability that way. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Dan Miller, Sidney Eng, and Keith Berger. Hi, this is Dan Miller. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you fine. Great. So I'm, I'd like to support the, I'd like to speak in support of this project. And I'd like to talk about um, status quo bias, which I think is part, kind of the root of the issue here. The community board inexplicably recommends the removal of hundreds of homes, vitally needed homes from this project. But they would never say that we should tear down existing homes because of some vague concern about oppressiveness, but they're somehow willing to do this for homes that don't exist yet, but will just a few years from now. Imagine yourself, you'll still, everyone involved in this conversation will still be here in 10 years. Will you feel good saying, I have denied 300 people the right to have a home where they wish because some neighbors were worried about the architecture? Come on, it's ridiculous. There is simply no good reason not to approve this project at the original scale. The community board's request to cut the number of units by 33% is simply unreasonable and can be safely disregarded. As you've seen, the community supports this project. The testimony tonight is uniformly in favor. Other, other, uh, other meetings have been similarly tilted. Like this is a popular project for good reason. This is exactly what we want housing development to look like in New York. It's, well, it's in a wealthy, gentrified neighborhood and it's ecologically friendly and it's on a site that's currently being used for mini golf. There's literally no reason not to approve this project at the full scale. And I urge Borough President Adams to heed his own words. He said that there was, that we have a housing supply crisis. Uh, and I think that he's right. And if he still stands by that, he should approve this project at the full scale. Thank you. Okay, our next three speakers are Sunny Eng, Keith Berger, and Paul Polo. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sunny Eng, uh, and I'm a resident of Southside Williamsburg on Broadway. I would like to express my support for the Rivering project as originally proposed and reject the community's board recommendation to reduce the number of units. There is currently a housing crisis impacting the entire city. As another speaker mentioned earlier, it is really difficult to look for an apartment to rent. This project would not only add more housing units in both affordable and market rate, as well as providing much needed amenities like publicly accessible park space and the YMCA. The park would provide a continuous waterfront to the public, filling in the current blight between Domino Park and the Northside Piers. I disagree with, this, with the CB1's recommendations of arbitrary cutting 33% of the units with dubious claims about the lack of capacity with local infrastructure. The MTA has recently done work to increase L train capacity and we have suffered through it, but that work is done. The inclusion of new residents from River Ring will not have a significant impact on the trains. Those who are against the projects are mostly against it because of aesthetics and perhaps maybe the towers will block their views. And those are frankly not good enough reasons to cut down the number of units. The one recommendation I would like to see consider is to reduce the number of parking spots included in the development. With so many nearby transportation options available, including the L, J, M, and Z trains, as well as the ferry, these new residents should be encouraged to travel to not, sorry, these new residents should be discouraged to travel by car. Also, as council member and likely future borough president, 
Reynoso has said during the CB meeting, the money saved from building parking spaces can be used to build more affordable units. So thank you to the borough president office for holding this meeting and thank you for your time to let me speak. I hope you all support this project. Thank you. Okay, our next few speakers are Keith Berger, Paul Polo, and James Leoncio. And as a reminder, we are still accepting requests to speak, uh, so please message uh, all panelists in the WebEx chat if you would like to testify. He seems to be having technical issues. If you could encourage that person to call in when we go back to taking uh, phone callers. Hi, this is Paul Pulo. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Very yeah, good. Uh, I'm the president of North Brooklyn Development and the board chair of the Greenpoint Y, and I strongly am in favor of this project. It's bold and visionary, plus it's going to give us all the good things, affordable housing, permanent jobs, union construction. I feel that this is something that will truly be great for generations, that we'll be all be proud of. As, as the board chair of the Y, there were a couple of callers who asked for things. One asked for an indoor basketball court. I can guarantee we're going to have an indoor basketball court. Another caller asked about the pool. It's going to be a fantastic aquatic center. Uh, two trees are guaranteed that it's going to be with a view of the East River. And I can guarantee that it's going to be a fantastic aquatic center. So I just want to say that the Y will also bring uh, all our programs to the north side and the south side, which has not been the case before. They had to travel all the way to Greenpoint. So now we're going to have a location that'll help them too. So I'm strongly in favor of it. Two Trees has been a great partner for the community. They have a long term view. They've done a great job. I ask the borough president to support this project. Thank you very much. Hi, it's Keith Berger. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know what was happening earlier. Uh, I want to. Thank you and Brooklyn Borough President Adams um, for allowing me to speak this evening. Um, I have served on a New York City based homeless services board for over 14 years. I've served on the board of North Brooklyn Parks Alliance for over 10. I care deeply about affordable housing solutions and I care deeply about this neighborhood and this community. I have come to the fundamental conclusion living here over the years that our city's rezoning process is broken. The city doesn't plan out the impact of development. It doesn't consider the surrounding area and infrastructure and plan cohesively. And that's that's what a lot of objections to this project really is about. It's about cohesive and intelligent planning and not prioritizing profits and tax breaks for rich developers in exchange for um, some benefits, but not enough. Um, I, I have lived here for a long time. I happen to live in a building that uh, was built as part of the 2005 rezoning where there was affordability components built into the project. Um, and I have to say it failed miserably. Um, at the 25% level, the, the community got less diverse, not more diverse in the time I've lived here. And as, and, and frankly, it's been, uh, uh, something that's heartbreaking to me to see, um, and to be part of that cause. And I think we have to think carefully about continuing to promote that. Um, that is why I'm in favor of increasing affordability, but also looking at development in a smarter way across, uh, the city and it's uh, why a coalition for uh, churches and, uh, is, is against this project. With respect to the park, it, it does look beautiful on paper, but 
the city recommends 2.5 acres of open space per thousand people. And if you add 2.9 acres, but 3,000 additional residents, that's not helping open space. That's hurting open space. That's why the community board is looking to seek to reduce the density here um, because of the impact that that it will have on open space. And that's why people care about Bushwick Inlet in Park. Bushwick Inlet Park was promised in 2005 is not yet done. There was supposed to be access to the water in Bushwick Inlet Park, including a site for kayaking. And that's why the community wants to focus on that. This lawn only holds 216 people. Domino is beautiful. It's held, but there's still three more towers coming on Domino that are going to increase the number of people using that space, which is already extremely crowded on weekends. Jobs, I am in favor of jobs, but you know, wh whether you want to talk about the alternative or not and stick to Two Trees' story that it's going to be an Amazon distribution center, the, their alternative actually promotes more jobs. And I can guarantee you Two Trees does not want an Amazon distribution or last mile facility next to their Crown Jewel Domino project. Um, there are lots of other alternative options for that site, including industry city-like options that would work great too. I'm not saying it shouldn't be housing, but I'm saying this fear mongering, we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't be just listening to it and as, as a fact. Um, quality of life, um, you know, I've heard some folks on this dismiss uh, issues as localized concerns. Well, of course they're local because they don't live here. They don't have to deal with the impact of development in this neighborhood day in and day out. The fact that the EIS doesn't even evaluate street traffic, which I think is a huge mistake. Um, I don't know how often they walk around and pay attention to the fact that trash cans are overflowing on every corner and every place in this neighborhood daily, not just on weekends when they might come to go to Smorgasburg or hang out at Domino. Um, you know, there's all sorts of other issues here. Um, I thank you for your time uh, and I'll uh, let others um, speak because I have to pick up my kids at soccer. Thank you. Our next two speakers are James Leonzio, Susan Albrecht, and Corey Canton. I'm not seeing James. Could we move on to Susan? Hi, um, I think you unmuted me. Uh, my name is Susan Albrecht. I'm a 30 year resident of North Brooklyn, and I am not in support of this rezoning. And I asked the borough president to take careful consideration of all the conditions that the community board has proposed. In 2005, our neighborhood and the waterfront was rezoned and this site was not included, which is why we're doing this. And I would ask the borough president to look closely at why this site was not included that, at that time. This project is too big. It's, it's out, exceeds the contextual density and at 60 stories is way above any other site on the waterfront. It will make our overcrowded neighborhood even more overcrowded and put a real stress on our overly strained infrastructure. Please take seriously the truth, the truly thoughtful process of the community board and its land use community committee and reduce the total number of units. This building is just too big and increase the number of affordable units. The benefits of this project for the community are not enough. Giving, given the financial profits the developer will get from this rezoning. Please oppose this proposal. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Corey Canton, Ramon Peguero, and Terry Carta. Thank you all for being here tonight. My name is Corey Canton and I'm a 13 year resident. Um, and like all of you, I'm on this call because I care deeply about the future of Williamsburg. I'd like to reinforce our community's response to this project. Community boards conditions of 50% affordability and 33% reduction of scale. I urge our city to push for the 50% affordability. Let's set a standard that we can be proud of. In terms of scale, 
what's clear here is that we need city planning. We need to consider this project in context to the 7,500, yes, 7,500 plus units that are coming in as of right to the 2005 rezoning. And I'd also like to note that the developer could have purchased one of those rezoned sites. And if they had, I would have supported their vision as I did with their purchase of the Domino site. But this site is in addition to a whole rezoned waterfront and the density to come cannot be ignored in this proposal or we are deaf to our future. While I appreciate the developer's L train study, the L train was closed for numerous weekends from 2016 to 2018. So the lower ridership was in reaction to a train line that was in such poor condition, it had to be shut down pretty frequently. This conversation has gotten polarized. Reducing the scale and increasing affordability should not be at odds of one another. I think that we're all on this call because we care so much about our community, but I think that we can work together. Otherwise, if scale and affordability are at odds, why not build 100 stories? How much is too much? Isn't that the point of city planning? To consider the greater context and create quality of life and affordability for all Brooklynites. Our neighbors, Community Board 1 knows what our community needs. Please consider both aspects of quality of life, affordability and livability, or we'll end up with a community that doesn't function. 50% affordability, 33% reduction. Do both and you can be proud of what you build in our city. Thank you. Okay, our next few speakers are Ramon Peguero, Terry Carta, and we also have Lucy, though I do not have the last name. Good evening. My name is Ramon Peguero, President and CEO of the Committee for Hispanic Children and Families, Chairman of the Board of Nuestros Niños Child Development Center and Board Member of the Brooklyn Navy Yard Development Corporation. I was brought to Williamsburg at the age of six, was raised there, raised my family there, and for the past 25 years, I've been serving the most vulnerable populations amongst us through my nonprofit affiliations. Williamsburg means different things to different people. But the one thing that we can all agree on is that Williamsburg has become the most sought after community in the state of New York, if not the country. This is why I was happy to hear that Two Trees, a reputable developer with over 10 years experience developing in our waterfront was proposing a new development, the River Rain. This development looks to add over 260 much needed affordable housing units to the community, as well as workforce development and employment opportunities. Some will argue that this is not enough, and I agree, but the alternative of zero affordable housing is worse. Others state that we should have 100% affordable housing or nothing at all. This is the, pos the position of a privileged individual that have nothing to lose if new affordable housing is not built, since they have the financial flexibility to house their families anywhere they wish. The women, children, and families of Williamsburg community cannot wait any longer while we play political games with their lives. Yes, we can enter into conversations with, uh, with a developer to push for more affordable housing, for larger units, for more local employment opportunities, to support for the local social service infrastructure. However, the one thing we cannot do is vote no on this project. To do that will be a slap on the face of the most vulnerable amongst us, who look to you to find rational solutions to some of their most difficult daily issues, housing being one of them. I ask the Brooklyn Borough President and future mayor to side with a vast majority of community members that are in support of this project and that are looking forward to the affordable housing and the employment opportunities that this development will bring. Your yes vote will also signal to many of us that come January 2022, we can count on the New York City administration that will work for all of us. I thank you for your years of dedicated public service, uh, Brooklyn Board President uh, Adam, and, and for your anticipated yes vote on this proposal. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, we have four speakers left. Terry Carda, Lucy, Rosangel Perez, and Kendall.
I'm not seeing Terry. Okay, could we move on to Lucy then? Thank you, and um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, we know you're a logical and reasonable man. You have that reputation. We urge you not to approve this ill-conceived development. Um, we've been listening to the community for the past two years, just like Steve Levin asked us to. We have 8,000 signatures against this proposal. Uh, that's thousands of registered voters, and um, we don't even have 75K to spend on lobbying like Two Trees do. And hey, look, Two Trees is not a bad developer. We're probably um, you know, lucky that it's them and not somebody else, but I must say that this plan is not logical or reasonable, especially not when you take into account the huge yeah. tax abatement that is in exchange for the minimum level of affordable housing. Everyone on this call, I think you're hearing, is supportive of more affordable housing. So let's demand that. Um, and to the gentleman who said this is not displacing people, the development market rate units we heard are gonna be priced at seven to 10,000 per month. Um, all that does is further increase the average price in the neighborhood, and it will further push out those diverse communities who belong here. There is nothing sustainable about building 60 plus stories on a site that floods regularly. That's just madness. And to say this many new residents will have no impact on the L train ridership, quite frankly, that just isn't logical. Um, and to those who say they want more time by the water to build memories or enjoy a safe environment with their kids, this is where Mr. Romanov, a 36 year old strong swimmer drowned just a few months ago. His family have been in touch with us. They are still grieving. Mr. Adams, you do not want that on your record or on your conscience. If you approve this and you have children getting in that water, you know, that is just crazy and irresponsible. Don't sell us short. We have only one waterfront. Let's build something safe and sustainable that actually delivers affordable homes that we all need it to. Um, this community um, is so willing to accept the first design that the developer offers. Come on, guys, we've got to ask for more. Thank you. I believe Terry Carta is now available to speak. What name is Terry using? I'm not sure. Do you see a Terry? And if we can't find, we could always again encourage to uh, call in shortly and we could uh, handle Terry as a phone caller. Can we move on to Rosangel Perez, Kendall Charter, and Katie Naplatarski? I'm not seeing Perez. Who's next? Kendall Charter. Can everybody hear me? Yep, we hear you. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Kendall Trotter. I'm the executive director of the Greenpoint Y. The YMC has been looking for an opportunity to expand our services and presence in, um, in a new state of the art facility in Williamsburg and Greenpoint. We welcome the opportunity to provide an additional services and resources to our community, and we remain committed to maintaining our presence in Greenpoint, where we have been for over 100 years. We, we would like to remain, we would like to remind the committee members, board members, 
and community members that the YMCA has been serving the Greenpoint and Williamsburg community since 1906, and we remain committed to serving the Greenpoint and Williamsburg community well into the future. Our involvement and support of the River Ring project will give us the opportunity to build a new state-of-the-art facility and serve thousands of more residents within the community. Our goal is to serve more. Our goal is to serve our working families, adults, and our seniors with programs like second grade swim, after school, early childhood, early childhood development, sports and wellness programs for our seniors and adults. Thank you, we fully support this program. We fully support the River Ring project. Okay, I believe Terry is now calling in to testify. Hi, this is Terry. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you fine. Great, thank you. My name is Terry Carta. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of the River Ring proposal on behalf of Brooklyn Greenway Initiative, a nonprofit organization that for two decades has been focused on the Brooklyn Waterfront Greenway as a 26 mile green ribbon of active transportation and open space from Greenpoint to East New York. BGI supports Two Trees River Ring proposal and urges the Brooklyn Borough President to approve it as presented by the developer. The city's open space has never been more critical to the mental and physical health of New Yorkers. There is also very clearly an urgent need to address climate change and increase resilience along New York's coastline by creating soft edge and living shoreline, increasing public access to the waterfront, balancing growth and risk through land use policy, and capturing the value of parks through creative funding models that carefully respond to local needs and context. But opportunities for creating new parks and waterfront access are few and far between. And public funding for the construction and ongoing maintenance of these spaces is severely lacking. Public-private partnerships are a proven solution, and Two Trees is a responsible partner. The River Ring's proposed waterfront park and protected in-water access would introduce an entirely new waterfront experience, rarely seen in North Brooklyn, with beaches, shallow waters, and tidal pools. The River Ring, sorry, the River Ring would be one of the last remaining stitches in the green ribbon around the waterfront. We need to protect our shorelines from sea level rise and superstorms. We need to foster greater connections between our open spaces and communities, and we need to leverage the private sector to make bold investments in our public realm. Let us work with responsible and responsive partners that understand the magnitude and the urgency of our current challenges and have the experience to, to help solve them. Two Trees is this partner, and the River Ring proposal, as proposed by the developer, will help address the challenges we face. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Okay, we have Katie Neplatarski, followed by Neil Sheehan and William Thomas. Hi, my name is Katie Nalpatarski. I'm a resident of North Brooklyn for almost 40 years. This project is not just about rivering. It is also about the context of the neighborhood. The city and borough president's office have responsibility to all residents of the area, including those of the proposed project. Therefore, I agree with all the community, community board's conditions including the net increase of affordable units and the reduction in the size of the buildings in order to mitigate the impact of this project. All residents of the proposed building and the area need the quality of life that these conditions would address and, that they, and seek to ensure. Please apply all the community board's conditions, including the above mentioned, as well as the funding for the Bushwick Inlet Park by the city to ensure adequate area resident to <laughs> adequate resident to park ratio, and also please require the rental of all units at South First Street by two trees. 
I'd also like to mention that very unfortunately, it looks like the Greenpoint Y would be losing its treasured YMCA while Williamsburg would gain one. Oh, YMCA at North 3rd Street is not a Greenpoint Y. It is paramount that there is commitment that the YMCA will not be merely a little boutique facility. And I'd like to add that the YMCA in Greenpoint has been there for more than 100 years. Um, with this proposal, Williamsburg will now have two pools and Greenpoint will not have one. Affordable housing is of paramount importance. However, before granting this rezoning, the borough and the city need to agree to all the community board conditions which hold the developer and the city to the highest level of civic responsibility. I would also like to emphasize that all CB1 members who voted approved of the conditions, excluding one who abstained. And all CB members that voted for these, approving these conditions had um, extensive review of the project. Thank you very much for hearing my testimony. Ooh. Lastly, we have Neil Sheehan and William Thomas. Can you hear me? This is Neil Sheehan. Can you hear me, Richard? Yes, Neil. Thank you. Uh, I'm Neil Sheehan. I'm a lifelong resident of Greenpoint, Williamsburg. Um, they, I also, in my spare time, I'm the co-founder of the North Brooklyn Angels. I run the Vincent the Paul Society at St. Anthony's Church. For those who like saints, today is the feast day of St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, and I used to run a drug and alcohol agency called the Outreach Project. I'm here uh, to talk about affordability and, uh, and to focus on the conditions of affordability. I support the general frame that, uh, that we, want, we want to see two trees do more. Uh, and we want to have affordability for people in the, who live in a community. We'd like to have it for our police officers, our teachers, the people, our, our drivers, our construction workers. And we'd like to see that happen in, in the context of, of the plan. Uh, I also want to talk to our higher angels. We're all part of this community in one way or another. Uh, the borough president walked the beat here. Uh, he's going to have a bigger job that includes us, we think. Uh, I, I think we need him to look into his higher angels. I think we need Jed Melendez to do that. And I think that we need two trees and he to set a new floor for affordability, the right levels, the right, and the right incomes for our community that pushes. Now, why do I say that? I say that, that and it's been said before tonight, we live in a city where homelessness and and ha affordable housing is a crisis. To be fair to, to our neighbors and some of the struggle around this re uh, re rezoning, we do have congestion issues in this community. We do have infrastructure issues in this community. Uh, there are issues, there are problems, but we have a crisis. And we talk about an emerging progressive community that believes in equity. Well, I've been taught that the way you do equity is you redistribute some of what more people have to those who have less. So we live in a highly gentrified community where hundreds and hundreds of families are hanging on like a thread in the community of their origin, where young adults who have grown up in their own neighborhoods and houses are in crisis and, and are looking to move out of their neighborhoods of origin. We live in a gentrified community where people who own property, big developers and individuals our winners have gotten wealthy from the gentrification as other people have suffered and been poor. So yes, we have congestion problems. Yes, we have infrastructure problems. We have them all over the city. But if we're gonna be a progressive community that cares about our neighbors, then we have to prioritize the needs of those less fortunate than ours. 
And I'm a winner in gentrification. I grew up in a house that now my children will be millionaires someday, probably. They don't waste it. Uh, a lot of the people in this struggle have aesthetic issues. They're, they're real. Park space is real. But you know what? It's a beautiful park. It's a beautiful view. But there's a joke in it. If you, you, know, if you don't live here, you don't see it. So higher angels, Eric, you're on top. You got to make things happen. The borough president needs to push this affordability issue, set a new goal here. Jed Melendez, you got to do as much as you can. You, you know, in 2005, I was the head of the Affordable Rezoning Committee. We didn't know our developers. You're a member of Sorry, our neighborhood. Uh, if you could you start need to do, up. You need to do as much as you can and more. Thank you. And please, let's all get together and fight, fight for a great community. Our final speaker is William Thomas, and then we will circle back to those that were not able to testify. William looks like he's not able to unmute. He may want to call in. Okay, uh, let's go through the list of those who were not able to testify. We had Jamiri Ramirez, Ray Acosta, James Leonzio, Rosangel Perez. Can you call one at a time? My memory is not that great. Jomiri Ramirez. Ray Acosta. James Leonzio. Rosangel Perez. None of them are on. Do we want to open up the phone lines to see if there's more speakers? We have a uh, single phone caller. You're unmuted. Going once, going twice. Muted. And again, a reminder for anybody still listening who wants the opportunity to speak, uh, you can quickly call in or you could uh, chat us, uh, send a message to the chat right now. Or um, if you're not wanting to speak tonight, you could still email us at askeric at brooklynbp.nyc.gov and we'll continue to take testimony. I believe we have one more speaker, Roberto Rodriguez. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Yes, thank you for letting me speak. I've been waiting since 530. 
and this is my fifth time trying. My name is Roberto Rodriguez. I am a lifetime resident living around the rezone area. I am very skeptical of promises made by two trees. You see, two trees has not dealt in good faith with the community. We are still waiting for all affordable units warehouse at 1 South 1st Street to be rented. What this community needs is less height, more affordable units at 100% affordability with 60% units with two and three bedrooms. A pledge to use a fossil free energy source such as geothermal heat loop systems and not gas reliance systems for heating. Finally, two trees should not be allowed to continue to take advantage of the 425A incentives while giving back less in return to this community. I thank you. And thank you for staying with us all those hours and uh, to be able to finally get your remarks in. Oh, is anyone there? Can you hear me? Hello, we can hear you. Please state your name. Uh, my name is Will Thomas. And uh, I, I, uh, um, I just want to uh, say I'm here to support the proposal for River Ring. I'm the executive director of Open New York, an independent grassroots pro housing organization. Uh, we believe that the project will help to alleviate New York's dire housing shortage. I uh, actively help to cut displacement in surrounding areas, and I hope the uh, borough president can find a way to uh, support the project. Um, on some level, I believe that everyone realizes that New York has a dire housing shortage, uh, but I just want to toss out a few numbers so everyone can remember how bad it is. Uh, between 2010 and 2017, uh, median rents increased by more than double median wages. Uh, homelessness has reached the highest level since the 1930s. Uh, Pre-COVID, one out of every uh, 10 elementary school students in New York City public schools uh, went home to shelters. Uh, so moving on from a global pandemic, uh, we'll need as much affordable housing as we can get, and the uh, uh, below market homes in this proposal are an obvious step in the right direction. Um, that said, the market rate homes this rezoning will allow will also help uh, by proactively preventing displacement elsewhere. Uh, the median household income of the census tract is well over six figures. Uh, more broadly, the Williamsburg waterfront is an extremely desirable area and would likely be many families' first choice. Uh, but you know, uh, if they can't find new places to live here, they're simply going to bid up the price of existing housing. And families who would have otherwise lived in that housing will instead move to more affordable neighborhoods. Uh, as displaced dis uh, demand increases, the rent will go up, which forces current tenants to allocate ever larger shares of their income to stay in their homes and knocks those who can't pay to the street. Uh, so, if we don't let young professionals live here, they're not going to disappear. They're going to continue to further displacement pressures and the uh, BP's office should spare families this pressure by supporting the project. Uh, in addition, I think the BP especially ought to support this project as the housing plank of his mayoral platform emphasized the importance of upzoning wealthy neighborhoods like this one uh, for affordable housing, exactly what this project proposes. So, rather than cutting the project by a third, as the community board suggested, I hope the borough president can work more constructively to maximize the housing in the project, uh, both affordable and market rate. Uh, thank you. We have another speaker, Peter Liu. Yes, hi, good evening. This is Peter Liu. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we do. Thank you. First of all, thank you to uh, President Bo uh, Borough President, uh, Mr. Adams, and uh, panelists, um, I and my wife are longtime residents in Williamsburg uh, waterfront area since 2008, not as long as uh, other speakers uh, in this neighborhood, but enough to experience from the last decade or so um, the experience here. It's a great community and thank appreciation to uh, the government bodies uh, doing a good job overall. Two Trees is a very reputable and socially conscious developer, and we commend them for that. All the planning to go to construct Domino Park, et cetera, is, is visible. It does bring value to the community. Uh, we do uh, want to second many of the concerns 
raised by many speakers this evening, specifically Keith Berger and Corey Kenton. Um, the environmental impact study must be a cohesive and critical part of the evaluation of the viability of this development, not just for the river ring, but also domino. Um, strongly encourage all the panelists, the borough presidents, to spend different time of the week, 10 minutes on Kent Avenue, you will understand why there's a severe concern for public health, public safety, the density is not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And I think Corey mentioned that the entire domino development site when it's fully engaged is going to be 75,000 units or 7,500 units, regardless number of zero. JNZ bus, ferry, bicycle, cars, it's, you will have a major population movement issue. So be, be, be much wiser and smarter than our predecessors and plan accordingly. Also, please, both the city government as well as the development, do a full accounting of your promises made to the public, to your constituents, constitu constituents, to the people that you represent, and make sure you deliver before moving ahead with River Ring. And Timing is not the timing and sequence must make sense. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Okay. One last call for speakers via phone and or WebEx. I don't see any more speakers, Ina. Are there any more phone calls? There are no phone calls. Richard, do you want to close the item? Richard, you muted. Sorry. Calendar item number one is closed. Um, for tonight, although we still will be taking um, comments sent to ask Eric. Okay, uh, the hearing on this ULRF application is now closed. Thank you for participating in this remote public hearing. Borough Pre President Adams will review the application heard today and submit his recommendations to the City Planning Commission for further consideration. He would like to take this opportunity to remind you that the City Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on this item, which will be announced at a later date. Borough President Adams would also like to remind viewers that comments can be submitted by email to ask Eric at brooklynbp.nyc.gov. This hearing is now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>